Hello, I am Yuji Oorchi from Enritsu Corporation Sensing and Device Company. Today, I shall introduce actual examples of the latest optical sensing measurements of shape and vibration using OFDR. This shows the contents of today's webinar. To start, I'll give a short explanation about our company followed by a description of non-contact measurement trends and a comparison of measurement methods. Next I'll briefly explain OFDR and introduce some light sources. From item 6, I will spend the remaining half of the webinar explaining some actual measurement examples, and then close with some conclusions. And Ritsa devices started with development and production of sensing devices, such as optical and electronic devices, wavelength swept light sources, etc., using compound semiconductors, such as indium phosphide NP as the core technology. 2020, we launched our sensing and device company specializing in device development for the communications, medical, industrial, environmental, and precision measurement business fields. 2021, the entire Enritsa group of businesses is focused on a new business vision summarized as beyond testing, beyond limits, for sustainable future together. Based on this new vision, today's webinar will explain the increasingly widespread application of our developments in wavelength swept light sources to optical frequency domain reflectometry OFDR, or optical reflectometry for short, for non-contact shape and vibration measurement. The trend in accuracy for non-contact industrial measurement of targets ranging in size from centimeters to meters requires measurement accuracies of about 1 to 10 micrometer. Depending on the measured object, conventional size measurement methods using micrometer gauges, vernier calipers, and rules cannot measure large-scale items accurately and often suffer from problems with measurement operator errors. More recently, one solution to these issues has been the widespread adoption of 3D scanners like that shown here, creating rapid market growth. We are interested in the optical interferometry methods listed as white light interferometry, swept source OCT, spectral domain OCT, and OFDR because the SLDs and wavelength swept light sources developed by our company are an important factor in the performance and measurement accuracy of these optical devices. Additionally, as non-optical interferometry methods, the table includes triangulation ranging used widely in industry, time of flight, and optical cross-section used by 3D scanning that appeared some time ago. This table compares the measurement range and accuracy of each method, but these values are only generally representative and vary with high-end system configurations and system scale. To clarify this theme, the figures for OFDR are highlighted here in red. This is selected because the large meter order measurement range and relatively high measurement accuracy are ideal for industrial measurement applications. Moreover, the measurement range can be extended using a light source with high coherence while measurement accuracy is improved by widening the light source wavelength sweep range. In other words, selecting a high-performance wavelength swept light source supports configuration of an OFDR system with a wider measurement range and higher accuracy. These two points are explained in more detail on later slides. This slide explains the principle of OFDR. An OFDR is configured from a wavelength swept light source, an interferometer, and an optical receiver. Light emitted from the light source is split into two paths by an optical coupler. The first path in blue is the reference path LR and passes via a second optical coupler to the optical receiver. The other path in red is the measured path LM and light passes via this optical circulator and through a lens into free space to illuminate the measurement target. Light reflected by the measured target is collected by the lens and passes via the optical circulator and second coupler to be received by the optical receiver. By using the reference LR and measured LM paths, when the length of LM is longer, 
the frequency of the light received from the LR path is different from the frequency of the light received from the LM path, and the optical receiver outputs a signal proportional to this frequency difference. The measured signal shown at the bottom of this figure is sampled by an AD converter for FFT fast Fourier transformation, resulting in the plot of distance difference LM minus LR on the x-axis, and the FFT spectrum power P on the y-axis to detect a peak at the position corresponding to the difference between LM and LR. The distance to the measurement target can be measured by using OFDR in this way. Just returning to the previous slide for a moment, I'll explain point A about why widening the light source swept wavelength range improves the distance resolution. Looking at the equation at the top of this slide, we can see that the peak width DZ after FFT processing is inversely proportional to either the light source wavelength sweep width delta lambda or the light frequency delta nu. For example, at measurement with a center wavelength of 1550 nanometers and wavelength sweep width of 20 nanometers, the peak width DZ is 60 micrometer, which is the measurement resolution. Although the peak width is 60 micrometer, it is highly accurate, and the peak center is limited with micrometer order precision. When the wavelength sweep width delta lambda is a multiple of 40 nanometers, the peak width DZ is halved to 30 nanometers and the peak position becomes more accurate with higher precision. This is how widening the wavelength sweep width improves the measurement resolution. Next, I'll explain point B about why increasing the light source coherence length extends the measurement range. This slide shows the positions of the FFT spectrum reflection peak versus the measured signal, or in other words, the distance from the measurement target. As shown by top figures, when the measured target is nearby, as shown at the top, the measured signal frequency is low and the position of the peak after FFT processing is low. As shown by middle figures, at farther distances from the measured target, as shown in the middle, the measured signal frequency is high and the position of the peak after FFT processing is high. The optical receiver and AD converter band limit the measurable distance, but another important item is the coherence length of the light source. As shown by top right figures, the measurable distance to the target requires considering half the coherence length, or in other words, the return journey of the emitted light and the light reflected by the measured target. As shown by bottom figures, the figure at the bottom shows an example of when this is exceeded. When the distance from the measured target exceeds half the light source coherence length, the correlation between the light passing along the reference path and along the measurement path is lost. Even applying FFT under this condition, the peak is broadened to mirroring meter order width and the accuracy is lost. In summary, when expanding the measurement range and wanting to extend the measurable distance, it is necessary to use a light source with a coherence length of twice the distance to be measured. Therefore, we have developed our wavelength swept light sources for these OFDR measurement applications. The photographs at the top left show our bench top type models, and the photograph at the top right shows the built-in model for installing in other equipment. There are two models both with a swept center wavelength of 1550 nanometer, but with different sweep frequencies of 1250 and 150 hertz. The wavelength sweep width differs according to model but can be set from an external PC controller to any value with a resolution of 1 picometer. The sweep waveform is a sine wave, and the minimum average power is 10 milliwatts. The coherence length is 10 meter, or more for the 1250 Hz higher sweep frequency model, and 100 meter or more for the 150 Hz lower sweep frequency model. After this slide I will explain some actual examples of distance, shape and vibration measurement using OFDR systems incorporating these light sources. 
However, there are no concrete plans to commercially release the described OFDR system and the information about interferometer configurations, lenses, etc. is for reference purposes only. This slide shows a picture of the overall OFDR system configuration. The bottom left is the OFDR equipment case containing the wavelength swept light source, interferometer, motor controller, etc. The size is indicated by the dimension labels. The light for measuring the distance to the target is output via optical fiber from this equipment and is emitted from a collimator lens to illuminate the measurement target. The light reflected from the target is collected by the same collimator lens and returns to the equipment via the original fiber. To measure the target shape and the distance to any point on it, a dual-axis motor and rotating stage are mounted on the tripod to support scanning in any direction. All the equipment other than OFDR part of the configuration is available on the commercial market. This PC is used to set the light source conditions and send commands to the motor controller as well as to FFT process the measured signals, compute the distance, and display the scan data. This slide shows the configuration of the optical system in the OFDR equipment case. The interferometer contains a reference interferometer in addition to the measurement interferometer. The reference interferometer is included to reanalyze the nonlinearity because the wavelength swept waveform is a sine wave. The details are ignored here, but if you are interested in this, please download the technical note from our website for more details. The AQA 5500P model of the wavelength swept light source is used with a sweep frequency of 1250 Hz. The sweep trigger signal output from the light source and the etalon signal are both electrical signals for confirming the optical wavelength position. This red LED marker is not used by the OFDR, but provides a visible marker for confirming the position of the light striking the target. From here, as the first measurement example, we'll look at examining the OFDR system measurement accuracy. A Mitsutoyo Step Master is a master gauge used for the Z-axis calibration of optical instruments. This diagram shows the measurement system. The origin for the distance measured by the OFDR is the point where light is emitted from the fiber collimator lens, or in other words, the fiber end face, from which the distance to the target is measured. In this measurement example, the measured target distance is 137 mm. This is the 3D shape of the step mask measured by the OFDR system. The Y-axis represents 500 samples in the step direction, the X-axis represents 125 samples in the horizontal direction at the same height. Since there is no averaging processing, the observed small convexities and concavities are due to measurement dispersion. The color classification on the height z-axis is hard to understand and the details are explained on the next slide. The left side of this slide shows the steps in the horizontal direction on the y-axis and the step heights in the vertical direction of the z-axis. The center step shown at number 3 is the z-axis reference point and the average of 125 scans in the x-direction is plotted. One scale unit on the vertical axis is equivalent to one micrometer. The purple steps indicated at the top right are a schematic representation of the step master. The step differences from step number 1 through number 5 are 2, 1, 0 0.5, and 0 0.25 micrometer, respectively. The relative distances to each step based on center step number 3 are listed in the top row of the table under the purple schematic. The values in the second row of the same table are maker's measured values in the record attached to the step master at purchase. The measured dispersion width is recorded as 0.03 micrometer. The values in bold in the third row are the values measured by OFDR. 
The distances relative to the center step number 3 range from 2.8 micrometer for step number 1 to 1.0 micrometer for step number 2 on the high side of step number 3, and from minus 0.5 micrometer for step number 4 to minus 0.9 micrometer for step number 5. The bottom row of the table lists the error between the maker's record book values and the OFDR measured values. The 0.14 micrometer error at step number 1 is relatively large, but the error in relative distances for the other steps is within 0.1 micrometer, indicating good measurement accuracy over a distance range of 137 millimeters. As a second measurement example, we performed comparative tests of the same object using OFDR and another non-contact method. The measurement target is the polished, metal, bicycle handlebar stem head shown in the photograph at the bottom of the slide. For the comparative test, we used a handheld cross-sectional 3D scanner. The optical cross-section method uses linear laser light to scan the target and the reflected light is captured by a CCD camera. The target is scanned several times and shape data for the entire target is processed. It is necessary to attach markers at several locations on the target to supplement the data for each scan. In this comparison test, since the 3D scanner was positioned at an optimum distance of 300 mm, the OFDR measurement was also made at a distance of 300 mm. The photograph at the top left is the target polished metallic handlebar stem head which is a relatively difficult object to measure using light. In the later explanation, this target is called a silver stem. The images at the bottom left and right are the images of the silver stem measured by the 3D scanner and OFDR, respectively. We can see that both methods captured the shape of the top half of the silver stem quite well. For accuracy, the next slide compares the local dimensions at the dashed lines. First, we compared the dimensions in the perpendicular direction as shown in the photograph at the top right. As shown by the top graphs, the silver stem diameter could be measured. The tube diameter measured by the 3D scanner left was 32.6 mm while the diameter measured using a vernier scale was 33.1 mm. In comparison, the tube diameter measured by OFDR right was 28.9 mm. This difference is because the end of the tube part causes light reflections in the horizontal direction causing the tip part to be cut off because OFDR measures only from directly above. Using the 3D scanner, data can be collected from the sides because the measurement direction can be freely adjusted. The bottom graphs show the measurement standard deviation SD. Using 3D scanning measurement, the SD was 5 micrometer near the center compared to 3 micrometer using OFDR. Looking at the measurable range, OFDR gave lower results overall. Next, this slide compares the dimensions of the silver stem when sliced in the horizontal direction. The same data was obtained at the horizontal part of the silver stem by both methods. However, as previously, the end part was cut by OFDR. Looking at the standard deviation in the bottom graphs, the 3D scanner standard deviation at the horizontal part was 5 micrometer, while the result for OFDR was 1 micrometer. Based on these results, we think it is necessary to use the most effective method considering the shape and materials of the target as well as either point measurement or overall measurement. This test compared shape measurement using OFDR and 3D scanning to evaluate objectively whether the former is effective. However, since the methods are so different, I leave the results only as reference materials rather than as evaluation materials. As a third measurement, we measured the overall shape of an automobile body from a remote position. The measurement target was a gray Honda Fit shuttle used as a business vehicle. The measurement setup is shown in this figure. 
The tripod was set at 4.5 meters from the vehicle, and the shape data was sampled by scanning 500 points in both the vertical and horizontal directions for a total of 25,000 points showing the dispersion of the data when the automatic scanning stage was stopped. This is the measured data from near the vehicle door when the automatic scanning stage was stopped. The y-axis is distance from the fixed tripod reference point with a scale of 1 micrometer. The x-axis is elapsed time. Although there is undulation in the data due to the effect of external forces, such as wind, the sigma value is 5.6 micrometer, and we can credibly believe the measurement accuracy is about 6 micrometer. This slide shows the overall shape of the vehicle measured from the actual scan. The top picture is a photograph of the target vehicle, and the bottom is the image measured by OFDR. The missing parts are the transparent windows where very little light is reflected. Since it is hard to evaluate accuracy from this result, the next slide examines the accuracy of a body cross-section. The figure at the top left is the same result as the previous slide, but with a cross-section slice at the position of the green line shown in the figure at the bottom left. Additionally, the distance data at the slice position is plotted in the graph at the top right. From this, we can see the upper door frame and the missing window, confirming the door area. The part near the plot center is magnified in the lower graph. The horizontal scale is 0.5 mm and the vertical scale is 20 mm. Since averaging processing has not been applied, there is peak-to-peak -peak variation of 50 micrometer and the accuracy is about 25 micrometer. In comparison to the previous stopped scan we think that the automatic stage causes the inferior accuracy. This accuracy might be improved by using a better quality stage. Moreover, improved accuracy can be expected if the target can be fixed because the effects of external factors, such as wind agitation, are also included, as shown with the automatic stage stopped. As the fourth measurement example, we measured a vibrating object. Using OFDR to measure a vibrating object results in Doppler shift effects causing a shift to a bigger or smaller value than the apparent vibration width. The correction method is explained at the bottom right of this slide. When the swept wavelength sweeps from short to long wavelengths the Doppler shift is the reverse of when sweeping from long to short wavelengths, so summing each measured value cancels out the Doppler shift, or in other words, this inspection corrects Doppler shift. The measurement setup is shown in this figure and photograph. The measurement target is the engine bay of the previously described fit shuttle and measurement was made from a distance of 1 meter. This slide shows the OFDR measurement of the engine bay. Points A, B, and C were chosen first for vibration measurement. I'll explain the results for point A first. The graph at the top left shows the condition with the engine stopped. The running engine vibrates as shown in the top right graph. The scale on the y-axis is 0.2 mm per division, and the scale on the elapsed time x-axis is 20 ms per division. These data are a synthesis of measurements when sweeping from short to long wavelengths on the out-sweep and from long to short wavelengths on the return sweep. The graph plot at the bottom shows the separated out and return data with the out data in orange and the return data in blue. The top left graph is the same as the previous graph. The combined out and return measured corrected data is shown in the graph on the right. The peak-to-peak -peak amplitude width is 0.2 mm and the cycle is about 40 Hz. In addition, the graph at the bottom right shows the calculated velocity at point A. 
We think this type of non-contact amplitude measurement could be effective at high temperature, dangerous and difficult locations in the engine bay where accelerometers cannot be mounted. This slide shows the vibration measurements at point B. The top right plot when the engine is stopped shows slight vibration with an amplitude of 0.1 mm, but this is due the car body itself shaking as a result of wind catching the open engine hood. Similar to the measurements at point A, the graph at the top right shows the raw data when the engine is running. The bottom graph shows the data plotted separately for the out and return wavelength sweeps. As with point A, from these separated data in the graph at the top left, the graph at the top right shows the corrected Doppler effect, and the graph at the bottom right shows the calculated velocity. The top right vibration data is not a sinusoidal wave pattern like point A, but from the calculated velocity data at the bottom right, we can see large 40 Hz harmonic components superimposed on the waveform. We think this can be an effective method for analyzing vibration conditions using extraction from this type of velocity data rather than using only vibration data. Vibration was measured in the same way at point C. Since point C is at the near side of the engine bay, the distance to the light emission reference point was 85 centimeters. Looking at the top right raw data and the separate data in the bottom graph, we can see that the vibration is smaller than at points A and B. The separated out and return data is shown in the top left graph with the corrected Doppler vibration data in the top right graph and calculated velocity at the bottom right. The velocity data confirms the presence of fine vibration at about 80 Hz. This is not the vibration measurement points in the engine bay, but is instead the measured data distribution. The area in the white rectangle of the image was scanned by OFDR. The bottom left graph is velocity data with the engine stopped, and the scale to the right displays the velocity schematically as colored bars ranging from blue as low velocity to red as high velocity. The graph at the bottom right is the data with the engine running. Since each area was scanned sequentially, these data do not represent simultaneous measurements, but represent the velocity distribution in this area. Obviously, by using a finer grid we could monitor the vibration conditions in a fixed area, for example, this might offer a new non-contact solution for specifying areas with mechanical vibration and the effectiveness of vibration countermeasures. From next slide show measurements and visualizations of other measurement targets as examples of schematics of vibration conditions. This slide shows measurement of a ceiling ventilator called an anemostat. The star symbols in each image indicate the same position on the anemostat. The top left image is a photograph of the target while the image at the top right is the shape measured by OFDR. The color gradations are not the velocity distribution but instead show the distance range difference. The image at the bottom left is a visualization of the velocity distributions with velocity increasing as the color becomes red. This image has vertical stripes because the ventilating air flow is switched on and off periodically. The blue stripes indicate there is no vibration because the air flow is off at this time. Red near the center of the anemostat shows the part with the largest vibration velocity. The image at the bottom right shows this in 3D. It clearly represents the strong and weak velocity distribution. As the last example of vibration measurement, we measured a lawn box installed in an office. The left image is a photograph of the lawn box, and the center image is the shape measured by OFDR. Since the center of the front door is a semi-transparent panel, the OFDR image shows the equipment installed in the box. The image at the right indicates the velocity distribution. Since there is a ventilation fan mounted on the top of the box, 
there is higher velocity in this region which also propagates to lower parts. The back of the long box is cabled and we can also see the vibration here. This shows the long box seen from the side. From the left, the images are a photograph of the side panel, the shape measured by OFDR, and the calculated velocity distribution. Like the front panel example, the side velocity distribution shows the highest velocities at the top where the cooling fan is located, but there is some vibration in the gap between the wall side of the back panel and the horizontal panel. Some very interesting results could be obtained by using this method to measure other electrical products and complex structures. Conclusions OFDR systems with high-coherence wavelength swept light sources can measure distances of more than 10 cm from the measurement target with submicron order accuracy. A shape accuracy of 25 micrometer was achieved when measuring an automobile body under the influence of external disturbances from a distance of 4.5 meters. We also consider evaluations in static environments. For difficult to measure targets with curved surfaces, comparison with measurement results from a 3D scanner shows that 3D scanning of overall shape was effective because there are no limits on measurement direction, but the measurement accuracy of OFDR is better when the measured target is suited to its use. At measurement of vibrating objects, OFDR can measure both shape and the surface distribution of velocity using Doppler shift correction. We think OFDR is an effective method for non-contact measurement of vibrating objects that are physically difficult to touch. Based on these results, OFDR systems using our company's light sources have useful applications in industrial non-contact shape and vibration measurement. Moreover, there are possible applications in inspection, maintenance, and safety of targets subject to mechanical vibration. This completes the webinar presentation. Thank you for your attention.